Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to see what is router transformation and what, what's the use of uh, creating router transformation in Informatica ACS. So router transformation is an active transformation that evaluates data based on some conditions and routes the data to different output groups. So it's all about uh, output groups when we are talking about router transformation. So for better understanding, let's take an example. So say for example, I have a flat file, patients with patient's information. You can see here, patient ID, patient name, age, gender, and medical condition, right? So this is the information we have. Now, I wanted to actually group this patient information based on the age. For example, you can see all the age groups of patients here, right? So I wanted to group them into like, say for example, uh, if the patient age is less than 18, right? So we'll be calling them as children. If it is between 18 to 64, we'll call them as adults and more than 64, right? So we can call them as elders. So like this, we wanted to group them, group the records. So we wanted to write a condition on the age and we wanted to group this patient information into different categories. So how can we do that? So in this case, we can use router transformation. So how do we do that? We'll see that now. So once you log into your uh, Informatica IDMC, so you'll select data integration service and you'll be creating a new map, mapping like this. And uh, source you'll be selecting. So in the, in my case, like uh, I'm selecting a patient.csv file, which is present in my secure agent machine here. Apps, data integration, data, right? So this will be my source. And what will be the target is, so we'll be creating three output groups first, so based on the condition. So I'll show you that how to actually, you know, divide, uh, divide or group them, group this information into three different output groups. So first, let's actually select the source, source. Source is my flat file, right? So, so even before that, so let's name our mapping. I wanted to name my mapping. Okay, it says to name the source, right? So let's name the source first then. Source dot, this is my patient, patient information, right? Which is a flat file, all right. So we'll come back to this and mapping. Yeah, I wanted to map it in underscore. I'll name my mapping as router demo, all right. So let's go to the source and define the source. So connection, we have to select the flat file one which is present on the secure agent machine. Source type single object, object we will be selecting here. Patient's information. So we can search here for the file. This will be the CSV file. That is the source. So which has the actual information, right? Patient information. And these are the fields in it, right? And we wanted to write a condition on age. Age is a number, right? So let's convert this age type here. So by default, a flat file, when you import it, right? So it all will be shown as strings, right? So you can always edit the metadata and you know, you can change the type here. So I'm gonna change it as integer. And save the source. So now we have the source. Now we wanted to write a condition on the age age field right and you know output the output the groups based on the condition right so how do you do that is so here we will be adding the router transformation we can achieve that using the router transformation so using router transformation now see here so let's call this as i'll just call this as router underscore patient age right so we can call it as I'm just naming my transformation. All right, now incoming fields. So you get all the incoming fields from the downstream, right? So, and here you see the output groups. This is what I was uh, referring to when I was seeing groups, right? So by default, you'll see the default group. So we'll be having two groups in router transformation. So user defined groups and default groups. So this is the default group. And we can even have the, we'll come to this later. So we'll see user defined groups. So how do we define the user defined groups is, so click on this plus icon and then we can name the groups. So based on the age, we, are, we wanted to uh, 
uh, have the different groups, right? So what I'll call here is, so I'll just say children. And we can always have the condition defined here. So we can have the simple advanced or parameterized condition and I'm selecting simple filter condition and click on this plus symbol to actually add the filter condition. So on what field we wanted to write the condition on in age, right? Age equal age. It has to be if it is less than 18. Right? So just click on OK. So this will be added. So this is one group, right? Like this, we can have multiple conditions. So one condition per one group, right? So now I'll be adding adults. We can run, I can define a condition for adults as well. So age. It has to be between 18 and 64, right? So we can say age greater than or equal to 18. And, and another condition, automatically it will be treated it as end condition. So it has to be less than 65. See, it will be an end condition. Now, we will add another condition, last condition, which we will call it as elders. And we'll add the condition as age greater than or equal to 65. Right? So this is how we wanted to group, right? Group the incoming records based on the conditions. So if you see, we have three different output groups now based on the condition, right? And what is the, so these are all called as user-defined groups because we define them, right? So we define it according to our condition. These are called as user-defined groups. And we do have default group, if you see here, right? So this default group captures the rows that do not satisfy any group condition. There could be some invalid records as well, right? So uh, in such case, like uh, uh, that, that will be captured by this default group. And uh, we have to remember that, uh, you know, we can't actually define any filter condition for this default group. See, we can't edit this. You can't even delete this default group. It's there and uh, its purpose is to, you know, to capture uh, the records when all of the conditions, group conditions, evaluates to false, right? Then what data integration does is the data integration passes this, the rows which do not uh, satisfy all these conditions, passes to the default group. So yeah, th that's about default group, right? Now, so we have defined the router transformation. You can just save it. Now we have three output groups here. So you can see a plus symbol here in orange color, right? So that's, when you click on that, you will get the actual groups defined. So you can see it here, three groups, right? So what we can do here is like, these are the different groups, right? So these groups, we can actually, you know, send it to a different targets if you want. So this information, I wanted to write it to three different targets, right? So how do we do that? We have to define three different targets. So the default group, by default, the link will be to the target with the default group, right? So you can always unlink it or you can have defend it into a target, whichever you want, right? Now, what I'm, I'll be doing is I'll just, I'll just remove this. I don't want it, uh, the default group records to be captured. So you can always do that uh, by unlinking the content, that uh, link. So if you wanted to, you know, uh, capture the drop records, if the drop records here are the ones which do not satisfy any condition of these three groups, we, we call them as drop records, right? So then if you want those records, then you can connect them to a target at the upstream transformation, right? So now we'll see, uh, you know, we, we wanted to define three targets. So I'll be defining three targets here and wanted to write the data into three different targets. So each group, I wanted to write it into one target and uh, we'll where we'll be writing it is in the Oracle database. So you can see my Oracle database doesn't have, so it has only customers and customers orders info tables. So I wanted to create tables runtime and wanted to write this data into those tables. So let's do that. So I'll be linking my children tables to target and, we'll, and let's define this target. We'll call this as maybe pediatrics.
I wanted all the all the fields to be written to the target, and we'll define the target. So Oracle DB, and then object. I wanted to create a new table at runtime, so we'll name the table. Create new at runtime, so just give the table name. I'll just name it as pediatrics department. All right. So this will be the table in which the group, first group, children group records will be written into. Right. All right. So yeah, target fields we will not be having because we are creating the new target. At runtime, right? So you can just save this. So, like this, we can actually map the output groups to different targets according to our choice. So, if you don't want it to group or if you just wanted to drop the records, you don't need to link it to any other any target. So, second one, adults, right? So let's call this as maybe some general medicine. Incoming fields will be the same. So target will be will be creating again. Oh, I wanted the target to be created on Oracle. So new at runtime, then we'll create general medicine department. That's it. Just save it. And in the same way, we'll have the third group as well. Third group is for elderly, right? So we'll link it to the last target. We'll call it as target geriatrics. And then go to target, define the target where you wanted this target to be written. Again, I wanted to be written this to the same Oracle. Okay. All right, so three departments, we are writing three different groups, right? So let's save this and you can validate the mapping here using this, this icon. So it says mapping is valid and you can also see here, right? Valid with green tick mark, which says that our mapping is valid, right? So you can always rearrange this by clicking on this icon, arrange all. So like this you get, or for more clarity, you can even have it like this itself. Right. So what did we do here? We had a patient source. So which is a flat file. We define it as a source and we wanted to group this patient information based on a condition. The condition we wanted to write it on the age. So we have different three groups. So three output groups. So we wanted to have these output groups to be written to a three different targets. We, we did that. So we did that using router transformation. Right. So now let's see. Let's run this mapping and check. Based on the condition, the records, the incoming records has to be written onto the target, right? So let's run this mapping. Click on run. It will convert uh, the mapping into mapping task. And now just click on run. So make sure uh, your runtime environment is uh, up and so your secure agent is up and running. You have to select the runtime environment uh, where your security agent is up and running, right? So go to my jobs and you can see router demo. So it says it is starting. It is running now. And you can see success, close process 10. So you can open the job and you can even view the result here, right? Source patients, 10 success flows. So 10 records, source records has been read successfully. And you can see the output groups as well here, right? Pediatric department is the table which created target one. So four records, it seems, and general medicine three, geriatrics three. So let's, let's verify this, let's validate this. So now let's go to these connections. Let's refresh this. So you can see three 
tables got created here, right? So let's start from, we can check it. Pediatrics department. And we can see here, so only four records got written into this pediatrics department. So this is because there are like four records which actually fall into this category where age less than 18, right? So you can see the age here. So based on that, actually records have been written into the target. Now let's see the second target as well. Like this, we can validate. So general. Medicine department, right? So what's the condition for this? The age group has to be between uh, 18 and 64, right? So you can see here. So that's the age group filter condition and that's the patient information. Now, let's also check last one. Yeah, you can see the condition greater than or equal to 65, right? So these are the patients, patient information here, right? So like this, we can actually output the, you know, write the condition and, you know, we can group the incoming data based on the condition and uh, we can output these groups using router transformation, right? So you might get a question, uh, why can't I do this with uh, filter transformation? It's only a condition, right? So I can achieve this even with the filter filter uh, transformation as well. Well, so you can only write one condition in the filter transformation, right? So in order to write multiple conditions, you need to have multiple filter transformations again, right? So you don't need to do that when you wanted to group the information on a same uh, same field with the con condition, right? So you can always use the router transformation to achieve that. And also in the filter transformation, right? So the drop records, that is like uh, if you wanted to, you know, uh, if a condition is met, right? So th that's fine. The records will be moved. Say, for example, if the condition is not met, then the records will be dropped, right? You can't actually capture the drop records. But using the router transformation, we always have a default group. Here we didn't do link it, but you can always link this to some target and uh, uh, you can have the drop records as well. Drop records, as said, like the ones which do not satisfy any condition for uh, any condition of the groups, right? So that becomes the drop record. So that records also, we can capture it into the target that we can't do it in the filter transformation. So this is all about like the difference between filter transformation, what we can't achieve in filter transformation and what we can achieve the same in router transformation, right? So when you have a, um, a data and you wanted to filter it out into different output groups, then we can actually easily do it with router transformation. So this is all about router transformation, right? So that's it for today's video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or if you run into any issues, right? So leave a comment below and I'll do my best to help out. Thanks for watching. See you next time.